So today I'm gonna to talk to you about my rhubarb plant. I have this crazy rhubarb plant and it has a little bit of a backstory to it. We inherited this plant when my parents moved from the house that they used to live in. We weren't even in this place yet. We were living in, in a rental and we went and we dug out this this rhubarb and it was crazy. We we like dug down as deep as we could. We got like dug out a shovel's worth of dirt and then dug another shovel's depths again and it had this insane taproot. It was as thick as an arm just going straight down <laughs> as far as it could. It was also living underneath trees. It was in almost complete full shade and despite that it was just massive. It was this insane plant. So <laughs> we massacred it and we dug it out and it came home and it lived with us in a garbage bag for a year and a half before we eventually moved here and it got planted in the spot that it is now. Once it got moved into this location, it became really happy. <laughs> Within a year of it being planted here, it has been consistently going to seed. And <laughs> I know you're not supposed to let your rhubarbs go to seed because it takes energy away from the plant. But the only reason we've been able to maintain this rhubarb the way that we have is because we let it go to seed. This rhubarb gets so crazy that I don't even pick it for for the rhubarb. I just pick it purely to keep it from like rotting in on itself. At this point right now this rhubarb is so dense with growth that I can't even I can't even push the leaves apart to get in there and and to pick stalks. I need to go in there, I need to pick out probably about half of what's grown because this rhubarb hasn't even started growing yet. At this point it's just baby growth. This rhubarb gets about a meter tall and the leaves will be, you know, my mom, my mom regularly comes and takes rhubarb leaves from us to make stepping stones. That's how big these leaves are. Last year we did three just maintenance picks, three just picks to keep it from, from, you know, choking itself out to allow some airflow to stay in the plant. And those three picks added up to a hundred pound harvest, which it's, it seems crazy to me to say it. And not only that, Every summer, because it goes to seed, it th throws seeds everywhere in our yard. This this plant produces 10,000 seeds every year, and we don't do anything. We just we just let it drop its seeds wherever. And every spring at this time of year, when we're going and we're prepping the garden beds throughout our entire garden, we'll probably have about 100 rhubarb babies, which we then kind of just pull straight out of the ground and then try to find homes for. We have a few that are a couple of years old and they've they've started to, you know, get to be a fairly good size. And, and then we have some that are kind of just struggling in the shade, but you know, it's a good placeholder for them until, you know, someone comes along who's like, oh, I could really use a rhubarb plant. <laughs> Ian and I were joking the other day about starting a rhubarb farm and basically <laughs> this would be the mother of many rhubarbs. This one rhubarb plant would give us the basis for being able to start that farm. <laughs> So I love this beast, this <laughs> this little shop of horrors plant that is doing its best to try to take over our garden. It's come to be that time of year again where if I don't do something for this rhubarb, it is just gonna choke itself to death and it's the center is gonna die out. So I need to get in there and I need to do a serious pick. So let's stack up some rhubarb. <laughs> I've seen people just rip out the rhubarb stalks, but I always use some pruners or a knife to cut my stalks because I don't really want to be opening up any sort of scars into the the kind of main part of the plant. My goal here is to keep <laughs> keep it as healthy as possible. Um, so because of that, I don't just rip stalks out. When I go to prune out, this plant. It is a little bit tricky because it's usually so dense that I have a hard time getting into it. What I would normally like to do if I was just picking rhubarb like a normal human being is just go into the center and get some of the the biggest stalks but on this I can't even access 
access the center usually by the time I get to it. So I usually start on, on the, the outer edges and then I, I work my way into the plant, thinning and you know opening up space as I go. There's usually some more baby roots around the outside because it seems like every year the plant just spreads and gets bigger. So these I'm not going to pick as densely, but I do have to cut some of these out just to open everything up. Um, but so I'll, I'll lightly pick on the outer edge and then more densely pick the further into the center I get. Here we go. I have about half of the plant thinned out here. Here's what the plant looks like when I've thinned it out. And then to do the comparison, here is the other side of the plant where I still need to do the work. Now that this plant is opened up a little bit, I can bring you inside of the plant and give you a little bit of a better idea what it is I'm doing here. So I can show you the center now that I've pruned so much out. This here is a really good example. This baby and then this full size stalk. This is one single rhubarb, um, you know, like root or stem. And I thin it down to one leaf to, you know, be able to reach up and get some sunlight and some energy and one baby leaf that's growing. So I, I strip out as much as I can for that to happen. And you can kind of see here in the center, that means a lot. <laughs> Another thing that I definitely want to do is I want to get in and I want to clear out any of this tiny little, you know, first growth foliage. Here's a good example. This one here. I don't want that in there because I don't want it dying, which it's going to be doing. You know, I can kind of reach in here and there's these yellow leaves. I don't want any of it that in there to be material for for slugs and, and other bugs to get in there and to feed on because I'm trying to keep as much air flowing through here as possible. This is basically all I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep my plant from dying by, by opening it up and allowing it to breathe and, and grow further. At this point, this is gonna give the plant enough space to keep growing. This is actually only my first prune of the season. And this prune isn't even really one of my biggest prunes because a lot of these leaves are kind of the first, first baby shoots that grow up. And I need to clear those out so that the bigger leaves, the bigger stalks are gonna be able to grow. Usually in about two weeks from doing this first prune, I come in and I do a second prune and that's when I get like the really big harvest. That's that's like the 50 pound harvest that looks crazy. All I'm doing at this point is just trying to keep the plant happy and healthy and, and alive. And <laughs> there's a really good solution to this other than what I'm doing. Doing this whole thinning thing is is something that, that I do, but it, it isn't what you're supposed to do. What you're supposed to do when your plant is so dense that it's drowning itself, you're supposed to divide it. You're supposed to, you know, dig up this plant and turn it into 20 different plants. But because of the way we grow here in our garden, where our goal is to produce the most in, in the smallest amount of space, and, you know, we obviously don't have space for you know another rhubarb. I'll, I'll give it the square meter that it takes up here but it's I'm not actually going to you know devote any more actual garden space to rhubarb. So because of that I have zero interest in dividing it and doing this has so far been successful in keeping the plant healthy and you know and not dying out because basically they'll start to rot in the center and get diseased if if they don't have that airflow. So by pruning it super aggressively like this it keeps the plant 
compromised enough that it keeps it from outgrowing its space and then I end up getting a lot of rhubarb. <laughs> so I, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing just, you know, what, <laughs> what this rhubarb plant can do and just how crazy it gets. And I'm gonna get back to finishing up and pruning the other half because this is a lot of work. <laughs> it usually takes me about two hours to do one of these prunes. So I'll see you guys next time.